three o'clock already. Can't believe it's three o'clock already. <laughs> Doesn't time fly? Hello, everybody. Hello, how are you today? Let me just um, just refresh my screen because I might just be talking to nobody. Oh, I, can, I, I can do that. So, how are we all this week? me from last week. Oh, there we go. Here I am. So do say hello if you're there. Yeah, thumbs up if you can see me. It's always nice to know that people can actually see me. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm quite happy to sit here and chat to myself. <laughs> oh, Cynthia's so, here. Oh, hi, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Because oh, this week, so this week we are... Um, Oh, that's her. Hello, Sue. Sue's supposed to be doing her self assessment again. Are you supposed to be doing that when we were doing our. Oh, I think that might be Ruth. Oh, Ruth. I hi, think Ruth. if it's Re IBW. Yes, I think yeah, that's, that's Ruth. Ruth. And hi, Sue. Hi, Justine. Hi, Justine. Oh, you're going to catch up later. That was, we'll see you later, Justine. <laughs> oh, hi, Joe. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, is it nice and sunny? It was hot. It was probably it was a bit grey there yesterday, wasn't it, when we spoke to you? Actually, do you know I've got the I've got the blinds closed in this room, so we had to sort of control the lighting. So I've no mm -hmm. idea what the weather's doing outside the sewing room today. Oh yeah, Ruth said yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> hi Debbie, hi Susan. <laughs> Long time no see. Hi Barbara. Hi Barbara. Hi Susan. Hi Debbie. You're cutting out your twelve. Oh, that's good, Barbara. What what are you making? What are you cutting out today? Oh, it's nice to know that people are sewing while they're watching us as well, listing in the background. That's great. So yes, today we are in uh, on Facebook and Instagram again today. We've upped our game again. Hi, Phil. How are you? Hi, Philippa. Um, we uh, we bought ourselves a new little gadget. So the phones are a bit closer together because I noticed last week I didn't know which one to look at. So <laughs> hopefully I'm more or less looking at the same one. And uh, more lighting and all sorts of gadgets we've been playing with today. We've had a very busy week. We've been um, we've been doing lots of sew alongs this week. So this week we've done we've started off with tutorials for my lovely dressmaker's portfolio, and uh, and then hi oh hi Sally how are you? Oh it's been ages since we saw you. Um, See, we started off our, our sew alongs this week. Hi, Janet. Hi, Sally. <laughs> hi, Janet. Oh, someone called Sean Chef says, don't know why I'm on a sewing live, but hi. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> you never know, you might not want to take up sewing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so on, what did I, I can't, I don't know, what day, it's Friday. It must be Friday because we're doing a live. Uh, so I'll just say hello to Janet and Susan because we did a, a sew along making lace knickers this morning and they joined us on Zoom this morning which was fun, we had good fun doing that. And yesterday we did a sew along making the Meg's Atelier Big Easy Top, which was really good fun. And uh, Barbara and Sue joined us for that. Hi Claire. Hi Claire. Just finished work. Getting home in time to see us, that's great. Oh, Barbara's making the So Different Moon Pocket Maxi. Hi Jill, how are you? Oh, it must be sunny outside. Coming in from Emsworth, it is yeah. sunny. When I went to get lunch, it was mm. sunny. Hi Charlie, nice to see you. Sorry on Instagram if you can't see all the comments and vice versa. We've got yeah. comments on both pages, so we'll be saying hello to people and you won't yes. know who, where we're getting that comment from. I'll try from. and chat to you on both. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you that are new, Amy, my daughter, is behind the camera. <laughs> Might be some new people on Instagram who don't know um, how we work. Hi Victoria. Victoria's down at Bloomsbury Square. Packing all your orders. Hello. Suzanne saying, love the rich colour of your top. Oh, well. thank you very much. Thank you. This is um, uh, this is a stop and still um, pattern. Actually, the same pattern that Amy was wearing last week, actually, for their jumper top. Uh, and the velvet from stop and still as well. And when we were doing our big easy top workshop the other day, Suzanne and Sue decided that we should wear sparkle because we haven't had time to wear sparkle. So this has got little gold flecks on it. And I haven't really worn it very much. So like we were saying the other day, Suzanne, <laughs> we need to wear our sparkle whenever we can. So this is actually um, a dress. So it's a, a maxi dress length. Um, so it's quite a nice, comfortable dress. Uh, so Janet's just ordered material for the silk sew along, lovely. You're going to join us for the sewing the silk 
in a couple of weeks. That'll be lovely. Sean okay. says he's uh, been looking at sewing clothes that he's ripped. <laughs> <laughs> he's know how to fix his clothes. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could teach you something. You never know. So what have you all been up to this week? I know that quite a few of you joined us for the sew alongs, which is really lovely. It was it's so lovely sewing along with people. It's almost like having you here in the sewing room with me, making clothes. Um, it's been so lovely this week. Uh, and again, we had, like I said, we had tutorials as well. And I did manage to do a little bit of sewing this week, but mainly it was preparing for the sew alongs. <laughs> so <laughs> next week I'm determined to make something a bit more, uh, a bit more interesting. Oh, hi, Mum. Annie's there on Facebook. Oh, hiya. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I see, I've seen some nice things being made on the Midhurst Sellers page this week. I saw that Sally made some things for her, her granddaughter and, um, oh, hi Catherine, how are you? Hi Catherine. Happy New Year. I haven't spoken to you for a while. Um, uh, and Mary, lovely Mary's made herself some trousers this week. Midhurst Sewers is our page for, that we have, um, which is a group for people who come to the sewing room or anyone who's interested in what we do here at the sewing room. And you can share pictures of what you've been making and ask questions from other people in the group. It's really lovely. Sean's asking if we do tutorials, he'd like to learn a new skill. We do on the website. You can see all of our tutor online classes and sew alongs that we're doing. And on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel as well. Mm. We have a YouTube channel uh, under Claire Tyler Couture where you can look up lots of little videos on sewing tips and techniques. And also the, the uh, Facebook Lives that we do on a Friday. Hello, Sandrine. Nice to see you. Oh, Kathy's having a late lunch break. <laughs> good timing. <laughs> yeah, that's very good timing. Um, yeah, so the uh, the lives that we do on a Friday, these Facebook lives where we talk, do lots of chat and do a couple of demos, I always put those onto YouTube uh, in the evening as well. We've got a hello from Susan on Instagram. Oh, hi Susan. And we've got Kate Wilson says she's really looking forward to next week's sew along. Oh, lovely. We're doing the trousers next week, aren't we? We're doing this week. We're doing the Mesa Atelier trousers. Oh, hello, Karen. Karen says she's new here. Uh, she's been working nights. Oh, oh, she's a nurse. Oh, good for you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, so you've got a day off today, and she's sewing the uh, Tilly the Buttons bobbin. Heather, hi, Heather. Uh, Claire's not had time for much sewing. Oh yes, I suppose. Oh yes, because it's <laughs> you'll be doing self self assessments and tax tax stuff as well in January, then, Claire. Oh, thank you for coming along, Karen. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you. Heather was on my last sewing with silk class that we managed to fit in in here in December when we made the little silk camisoles. We're doing that on um, a sewing along next week, Heather. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Charlie thinks I'm a social media star. What do you reckon? <laughs> we have got a little round influencer light tonight, <laughs> today. <laughs> It's all got very tech. We've got very techy. <laughs> oh, Janet still needs to do a tax return. I was good. I did mine in December. <gasps> I know. I shocked myself. <laughs> Sean's got a sewing machine in his loft, so he says that's oh, great. Oh, get your sewing machine out. Come and join us. Hi, Karen. Oh, hi, Love Karen. How are you? Oh, Karen watches on us on her big, uh, big screen TV. So mm. sent me some pictures after last week. <laughs> of us on the great big screen TV in her living room so it's massive on screen <laughs> hi Carolyn uh, Cynthia says she bought the pattern for the camisole to try and make on her own as she can't enjoy the sew along sadly oh I know I think um, Cynthia works on Wednesdays as well so we'll have to try and do some on different days we're just trying to sort of do something on a regular day each week because it helps us with our planning oh. <laughs> <laughs> Heather said that she hopes everyone gets the uh, straps in without twisting uh, on the <laughs> on the silk camisole top. Heather was making a lovely silk camisole in Liberty Silk and we put the straps in, we had it all laid out, she sewed them in and they were twisted. And we did it about five times. I don't know what, I, I don't know how it happened, Heather. <laughs> we got there a in mystery. the end. It was a mystery of the twisting straps. I don't know. We got there in the end anyway, and it was beautiful. In fact, I've used the picture of Heather's camisole on the sewing with silk um, on the website because it was so pretty. Oh, 
Oh, Claire's made the Ogden County from a scrap of fabric last week. No, yeah, the straps are challenging, aren't they, actually? But it is worth it. I mean, your instinct is to put them in both sides at the same time, but it just doesn't work. You have to do it a different way. So. <laughs> Janet went wrong in her knitting because she was watching. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Janet. <laughs> Has your lace still not turned up, Janet? Some of the poor ladies who were on our lace knicker workshop this morning, I sent out all the kits on Monday and some of them still haven't arrived this morning. But we are doing another one next week, so if anyone wants to make lace knickers with us next week, we're going to do it again. So if you want to book on that, and I'll send you out a kit with enough lace to make two pairs of knickers. Cynthia's asking, would the cami work in a silk velvet? Um, I think it would. The... Um, the only thing I'm thinking is that the Ogden cami has, uh, instead of having a facing, has like a half lining. Um, so whether you'd want the velvet against your skin or whether you might want to do that lining in a silk or something, just so that it's, uh, but otherwise, yes, I don't see why not. Oh, Heather says she has finished her camisole. And Jenny hasn't received her lace yet. Oh, Suzanne, ah, oh, Richard liked your big easy top. That's Hooray. great. Suzanne was on the workshop yesterday with us making big easy tops. I've been wearing mine today. Yeah. I wore mine this morning. They're so useful, Suzanne, honestly. Do you think you'll make another one? Because you she do says, have some other yeah, fabric. Yeah, she says she's going to make another one. Oh, you're definitely going to make another one. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's such a lovely top. I have mine on this morning. It's so cosy. So I'll make the trousers to go with that next week and then we'll be sorted. For our lockdown, our lockdown wardrobe. <laughs> Talking of the Makers Atelier, um, the new magazine came out this week. Some of you who are subscribers may have received it. Um, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely magazine. Um, the free pattern this time is a, a gilet, a quilted gilet, which is a nice idea. Uh, Susan's asking which grey lace I used. I used the wide one. It's the wide one. It looks a bit like animal print, actually. It does, yeah. Is there any can... more of that one left? Ooh, oh. I don't know if I can do Amy's it. Amy's showing her knickers on screen. Yeah, that's the one I used. <laughs> How wide is that one? Because they're that is... by, the, by the width of it. Is it in inches? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a eight. Ah, oh, eight inch. There you go. Eight inch grey lace. Um, Joe's making the tzatziki top, uh, uh, tzatziki top that we had on the dummy last week. Cool. That's lovely, Jay. You'll like that with those darts that come down from the neckline. Susan's asking, will you be dealing with trousers? So long. Um, I'm guessing. We'll be doing. Well, we're doing the. We're doing the. Um, uh, pull on the, the elastic waist trousers next week. So we will do a little bit of talk about fitting for those. It's difficult to do trousers, isn't it, on a sew along? It is. Virtually, anyway, because of the it fitting. Is, I, mean, I, I can talk you through fitting things on a sew along, but I sort of always want to sort of be able to, to do it manually <laughs> to fit you in trousers. But we'll do we'll do some fitting. Um, oh, Susan says thank you. No Jo. Props. <laughs> There's quite a lot of technique videos, though. Yes. So like the fly zip and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. But trouser, the main thing with trousers is the fitting, isn't it, I think. Mm. So the, the trousers we're going to make next week, which are actually like from the next atelier, are um, the pattern has two types of trousers on it, and it has uh, a um, zip one or uh, the elastic waist one. Next week we're going to do the elastic one. Uh, well, Karen's asking... Is there a list of the plans list? sew-alongs that we mentioned quite a few that aren't on yet on the website? Um, is that because they've sold out? Really quite fast. It might be they sold out. Yeah, the only one that I've taken off is the denim skirt, but that was by accident, so I'll put that back up later. <laughs> it should all be on there under sew along. Yeah, on the, under online classes and then sew alongs, Karen. You should be able to find them. Hi, Jen. Oh, hi, Jen. How are you? Oh, Jen, you were going to put the denim skirt. I wasn't sure if I'd The sew alongs don't seem to be on your website. Oh. You have to go through your link. Uh oh. 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 We'll sort that out after this. Yeah, have know. a look at that, Joe. You should be able to go to online classes and then there's a drop down menu and it says sew alongs. I'm wondering if that's a mobile issue. If that's on mobile, so we'll have to double check that if it's a, on the mobile versions. Never miss it, Jen. Denim, denim skirt starts next week. It starts next week. Right, I'm sorry about that. I managed to uh, delete it off the website. <laughs> Just before we came on air, and I haven't had time to put it back because one of the ones I was putting up is a denim jacket, which is going to follow on. 
From the denim skirt? Joe's saying no. I wonder if when you were adding stuff. Oh, we will check that, Joe. So, um, oh, you go on to online workshops. Yeah, online workshops. And then it's an option in there. Yeah. There's no drop down for so long. No, you have to click on online workshops and then you go down the side and it should say garments, one to ones, um, some portfolio, and so alongs, I think. Ah, Jen wants to do the denim jacket too. Oh yes, just listed that one. Yeah, we just listed that one. But while I was doing that, I managed to delete the skirt. Oh, Kathy's saying they're on her mobile. Uh, we can't, um, we can only record it for people that are on the workshop, Catherine. You um, can join at the beginning and then. Yeah, probably. so if you, if you, if you, bought the workshop and joined it at the beginning and you had to leave or you want to join in later then we can we can do the recording for that but we can't just sell the recording unless you're part of the workshop if you see what I mean uh, does the skirt for... need to twirl is that for is that the wrap skirt that I've just put up <laughs> so yeah I've just added the um, closet case closet core sorry I still forget that they changed their name closet case patterns and now closet core patterns uh, and I've just put up the uh, Fiore uh, wrap skirt as a as a class on a sew along. Um, it was actually one that I wanted to do here in the sewing room, and uh, I think it's going to have to be moved because of the we're not going to be open in time. So I thought we'd do it as a sew along. Uh, I don't think we need to twirl that. Oh, the denim skirt. No, I don't think so. I mean, you can if you want to, um, but I should be able to help you with that with measurements. We didn't twirl it when we did it the in the. Um, I've taught it a couple of times here in the sewing room, just using your measurements and working out which size. So if you have the pattern beforehand, Joe, and you want to do it, you could make a 12 just to just to be sure. You can make a very simple 12 without any pockets or anything, just to get the sizing. The only thing that I found that when with the denim skirt that we often have to make a few alterations is if we've um, if you use a stretch denim and uh, you want a bit slightly closer fit. And then we just take it in a bit on the side seam. So, um, yeah, so if you, you're, very, you're welcome to make a twirl before the class if you want to. If you want any advice on that, just email me before the class uh, and we can talk about that. But we should be okay to work it out from measurements, if that uh, makes sense. Kate's asking, what prep do we need to do for the wide leg trouser so along? Uh, nothing really. Um, I will send out an email, but really you shouldn't need to. We've got a day to make them. They're quite Unless simple you bought to make. the pattern PDF, then you need to stick uh, it together. Yeah, if you bought the PDF <laughs> pattern, you stick it together. Um, if you want to trace the pattern, you could trace your pattern, but obviously I'm going to be talking to you about sizing. Um, oh, there we go. Catherine's saying she might be able to do it because she could join the beginning of it. Uh, yes, Victoria has... Suitable jerseys. There's the modal terry jersey works really well, mm -hmm. or like a uh, cotton sweatshirting type fabric works well. Or there's a stretch crepe that I'm doing. Mum's going to do the, hers in. Yeah, the Italian stretch crepe, which I've got. I think it only comes in grey, but it's really really lovely weight. So if you look at it a little bit smarter, that's really nice. The denim that Amy's dress skirt was that stretch. Uh, is that the turk the teal one, Jen? Yeah, it is stretched. That's mm. from Bloomsbury. It comes yeah. in teal and like a fawn colour, and it does have stretch in it. Yeah. Was there a red one as well? Mm, there is a red denim. Yeah, yeah it's not the denim. same type. The one I used has like a, a schlub. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, Clark is here. Clark Ooh. saying sorry, I'm late. I've just been opening the items I ordered from you a day ago. Can't believe it oh. arrived so fast. There you go. Now isn't that amazing? That post arrived really quickly, but the stuff I post on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> for the sew along, it still hasn't arrived. Yeah. I'm glad it arrived, Clark. That's great. And you're going to join us on. You're joining us for sewing with Silk, aren't you? That'll be lovely. It'd be so nice to see you. So, yeah, Catherine, um, if you have a chat with Victoria, Jess, she would definitely have suitable fabric. She knows the sew alongs we're doing now, although I might give her a call because I put some new ones on. <laughs> Jen, all fawns. Yeah, the fawn colour is really nice, Jen. It's kind of like a cafe latte type. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And I nice. think Jen's already got the pattern, so that's fine. Yeah, Clark's very excited. It should be fun. It will be fun. It will definitely be fun. The, the, the ones we've done so far have been so nice. I mean, it's always lovely. We really love the Fridays when we can chat to you here and chat, have a chat with you 
through um, through the screen here but doing the sew along so we can actually see each other and uh, it's really good fun and then we can sort of show each other things on the screen and it's lovely. <laughs> Ruth says sorry the blooming boss keeps ringing me I dropped off. <laughs> I oh know, isn't it terrible when your work gets in the way of your social, dare they? Your social life? <laughs> Don't they know it's time for Claire's Threads Live? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so let me just show you this magazine yeah. because it is absolutely lovely. And of course, I have written a couple of features in it as well. So you might want to get it. Uh, but there's some fantastic uh, articles. A lot of the stuff that is in this one is about uh, natural dyeing and weave, a bit about weaving. Um, this season's colours, as always, Francis has done a lovely bit about... Um, uh, this season's colours. So really, really interesting. There's the pattern for the quilted gilet. Um, and I've done a little uh, feature about, there's my little feature about continuous bias binding. And also near the back, there is um, a little bit about sewing basics, back to basics, really. So I've only just got it. Uh, so I haven't had time to read it yet. Victoria is saying, check out 2489 Ponty jersey for the trousers. It's got oh, a nice okay. weight to it. Jen says she does have lots of denim, three types, but any excuse for more. <laughs> Heather is saying, do you know where I can get a met metal invisible zip foot? You may remember mine seemed to be for the wrong machine. She ordered one and it's oh, plastic. No. I, would, I would go for Jaycott's online. Um, Jaycott's have, because your machine was a Janome, wasn't it, Heather, I think? Um, yeah, if you go to um, Jaycott's online, they have the metal uh, invisible zip feet and it's the number for Janome is Z the foot is, is Z uh, if you have any problems give them a ring and tell them the model of your machine and they're really helpful uh, the other company that I use if Jaycott's haven't got them is um, <laughs> Suzanne's book the sew along <laughs> <laughs> straight in there uh, um, uh, sewing Machines Direct, where I, when people want to buy a new sewing machine, I often send them to Sewing Machines Direct, and they also do all the parts as well. So, but I always try Jaycott's first. And Marilyn's here on Instagram. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, hi, Marilyn. How she are you? She missed the sew along yesterday. Sad face. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, we had we did have fun yesterday. I mean, it's it's one that we can always do again. It's quite the thing with the sew along is that it's actually quite an easy top to make a big easy top, but it's just so nice to do it with other people in the room, and. Uh, and I just chat like I do here. I just <laughs> Clark. Clark says, my little one wants to know what cocktails Amy is making today. Love how she thinks of sewing and cocktails as linked. <laughs> I don't know where she gets that from, Clark. They are linked together. <laughs> I don't know where she, she gets watched that from. you watched Sewing Bee at Christmas? They were clearly linked. I'm going to try and adapt the haberdackery. What to do a, a dry January? Yeah. Mission. Yeah, today's cocktail is one of your five a day. Mm. That's uh, my little cryptic clue. Cryptic clue for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Heather, I thought it was a genome, a little gem. Um, yeah, so you want a Z. It's, the, it's a square foot with a little uh, post at the front and it's Z. So have, check out Jaycott's first. So just, just in case you need anything like sewing patterns or anything like that, uh, they're good for those as well. So... Yes, yeah, Suzanne said there are some great articles this month in the magazine. It's a nice, it's a nice one, isn't it? When it comes through the door, you will see, oh, that's a nice magazine to come through. So you can subscribe to it or you can just buy the individual, um, the individual copies. I think there's some back copies available as well. So if you ever missed any, you can go back and get those as well. So that's uh, the next Atelier magazine. So yesterday when we were um, doing the Big Easy Top, Amy made her Big Easy Top in a lovely boiled wool, boiled wool and viscose mixture. So it just made me think that maybe we should have a little recap on boiled wool. Yes, last week we did a recap on jersey and this week I thought we'd have a bit of a recap on boiled wool. Um, I feel like we've got lots of space in here today. Yeah, so we've got a new layout. Yeah, because we decided to do our sew-alongs in, in this room, in the haberdashery room. Um, we've set it all up and it's really, I feel like I've got loads of space, it's great. We tried to set it up in the sewing room, but anyone who's been here, the sewing room is lovely in the, in the other room, but it's quite, it's, I, I kept it very uh, empty, just with the sewing machine and our tables and chairs, so it was a bit echoey, so we decided uh, it was better to do them in here, although Amy sits in the room, don't you? Well, yeah, because otherwise my machine interrupts you. <laughs> so I thought I would do a little bit of a demo on a recap on 
So with World War. So Amy's going to come in with her new gadget. Wait, can you get in? <laughs> if you do it with my sew alongs, you'll know that I move this sort of tripod around with my phone, with my second camera. So bear with me, people, because I have a new gadget yeah, and it also, may all go wrong. But both cameras now move at the same time. And also, you've got a table and lights. In oh the God, way. I've got all these obstacles and today. An okay, I didn't clear the path in advance, so note to self for next week. <laughs> clear the, the walking path. path. <laughs> okay. Every time we think we've made it easier for ourselves, actually. I know. It's a little oh, Alice here. Oh, hi, Al. How are you? That's Alice out in America. Right. Oh, so much easier with one tripod. Oh, that's good. Excellent. Okay. So, <laughs> Boiled wool. Boiled wool is a great fabric. Uh, it's so easy to use. You can make all sorts of things with it. Um, you may have noticed behind me when we were facing the other way, we had a couple of boiled wool coats. Uh, one was the Meg's Atelier boiled wool coat and one was the Tosuti Berlin jacket. Um, and it's such a, you know, an easy fabric to work with. So you can really play around with the, um, with the construction. Ruth is saying she loves board wool, but as she's got older, she finds it super itchy. So a blend may be the way to go. Yes, this is a board wool viscose. So mm. um, I wore it all day today with just a vest top underneath. Actually, this jumper, and yeah. it's not itchy at all. So the off cuts that I've got on the table, I don't know if you can see this now. We've taken the. This was Amy's. Um, Amy's big easy top. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. There. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, big easy top that she, so she made Amy made this yesterday and I've got a couple made in it's a board wool and viscose mix much more comfortable to wear uh, if you're making things like tops the 100% board wool is great for coats and jackets and then the mixture with viscose is really nice for tops uh, it's got a little bit of stretch to it uh, really comfortable to wear bear in mind that when you buy your board wool it tends to shrink by about 10% um, Susan saying she'll oh, see your dress see my dress, now. my lovely velvety fabric. I don't get an excuse to wear it very often, so I thought I'd just wear it today. Uh, yeah, so bear in mind that you might want to buy at least 10% more, um, because when you steam your fabric, it will shrink by at least 10%. Um, so that's always something to bear in mind. Um, this, uh, the wool of this goes again is a bit more drapey as well, so when you're wearing it, you get a bit of drape. So it's a really lovely fabric to work with. You can choose several different seam finishes. It's. It well, Clark's just asked, uh, could you line boiled wool to stop the itch? And if so, what would you recommend? It's really tricky to line boiled wool. We had a. I mean, I did a. I, I lined a boiled wool skirt with. I made one of the pull on skirts from the Mega's Atelier out of a um, black boiled wool with sequins on it. Uh, and it was a too itchy. So I lined it with a stretch lining, but I underlined it. So um, where you cut out the skirt piece and cut out the stretch lining, tack them together and then make up the garment. If you try to do a loose lining, they'll work, they will work it's opposite like each other. Yeah, they don't work so well. So um, if you really wanted to line it, I, I used a stretch lining and I interlined, underlined rather, rather than making a loose lining. Uh, Sue's asking, how would you wash the wool after wearing it? I don't wash mine. I'll probably get it dry cleaned. I have washed one. I did wash one of my little shell tops on a wool wash. So I would hand wash it if you're going to. I washed my little shell top and it shrunk too much. I to, then I to, you have to reshape it back. So if you're going to wash it, I would hand wash it and then uh, pull it back into shape and let it dry flat. Oh, Clark's saying, would the pattern work with fleece, as in the big easy top? And yes. Yeah, you've made it I in made, fleece. Yeah, I've you? made it in fleece. The big easy top I've made in fleece and I've made it... Uh, in a lovely sweatshirt fabric. That's what I made it in yesterday as well. What else? Can anything I... with stretch, really. Yeah, anything with stretch. So The yeah, pattern was originally made for the raw edge, wasn't it? Yeah, but... it was originally made for a raw edge fabric, like a board wool. But as I said, a lot of the Mex Atelier patterns are, are just like a blank canvas, so you can decide what you're going to do with it. So, um... <laughs> Sue said her top shrunk as well. Mm. Yes, you need to wear a bib when you're wearing your... <laughs> also, if you wear the coat out in the rain, you start to smell a bit like a wet dog. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> so avoid 100%, rain. 100% wool, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lovely and warm, though. Yes, yeah, so going back to the Big Easy Top, if you're... If you're um, for my sweatshirt one that I made, which is in the other room, um, I... I overlocked the edges because it was a sweatshirt fabric rather than a raw red, rather than making it raw edge, and I added an extra inch to the bottom and to the length of the sleeves so I could do a hem. So that was the only difference, and I overlocked all these edges in 
pretty coloured overlocking threads. <laughs> Sue, you're not selling it to me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just don't go out in the rain in your wool. Yeah. I wouldn't wear a wool coat out in the rain anyway. Clark will be back in a minute. She's got to go and do her some homeschooling. Oh, OK. How <laughs> <laughs> to make cocktails. Uh, so, like I was saying, so you can choose a, a few different types of um, seam finish just to play about with it. You can choose to have your seams on the inside or the outside of your garment. I'm going to show you a sample on this pink coat here behind me. See, Suzanne liked my rain tip because it rains a lot there in Janet. <laughs> you don't want your coat to shrink and start smelling. <laughs> this coat here has got some of the seams on the, on the outside of the garment and some of them to the inside of the garment. So I'm going to just show you how to do that so you can see that um, a little bit closer. Let me just move this coat out of the way. I'm going to stick my iron on as well. Press the wrong button. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, board wool doesn't tend to have a right and wrong side, um, but I'm going to put my fabric wrong sides together. And I've got a walking foot on my machine because board wool has got a slight stretch to it, and also if you're using the 100% board wool, it's a bit thick as well, so it can move around quite a lot. I'm using a straight stitch on the machine. And I'm going to put the stitch length up to uh, either 2.8 or 3. I'm going to go for 3 for this demonstration. So I'm going to do a longer stitch length. Particularly if you're working with the 100% board wool, it is quite thick to work with. So I'm just going to stitch my seam. I'm using today for this demonstration. I'm using a one and a half centimeter, five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I didn't pin my fabric, but that's because I'm only using a small sample. I wouldn't recommend you don't pin normally. So I've just stitched my seam. I've done it in a nice pink thread so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to trim this seam down to about three millimetres. This is one of my favourite seam um, seams on board. Well, it really gives a nice bit of interest to your seam. Trim it down to about three mils. And then just give it a little press. So I'm just going to grab my iron. And I've got the steam iron today because this steam iron doesn't press with much heat. It's all steam, but it's not quite warmed up enough. But I'm just going to press it very lightly. It'll do its own thing, really. There we go. So that's... That's the first seam finish that I really like with um, with boiled wool and have that on the outside. Of course you could have that on the inside as well equally, you could have that as a finish on the inside. But I think on, on the outside of a coat that looks really nice. The next finish would be an option for if you were doing your seams right sides together. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stitch my seam with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. See, I should have pinned it, it's just moved a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> and I'm going to press this open For this one, I'm actually going to do my little three-step press, but I want it to press quite nicely. So I'm going to press over the seam as I've stitched it, just with a light piece of, bit of steam. Let's put the iron that side so it's not in the way. Then I'm going to press it from the wrong side. Oh, Clark might not be back. No worries, Clark. You can always watch it later on uh, Catch Up. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll see you in a couple of weeks anyway. Sometimes the wall doesn't press very flat, so you might want to grab hold of a, something like a clapper. So you just put a bit of steam through it. You don't want to put too much heat into, into wool. So I'm not trying to overpress it. And then just press it with the clapper. Julie says she noticed you're using a walking foot. Yes, because the, um, 
wool has got a slight uh, stretch to it, so it just helps to control the fabric by using a walking foot. And then I'm using, to press from the right side, a wool pressing cloth. And just try and press where the seam is. You don't want to be pressing the whole garment every time, just try and press the seam. So that's nicely pressed. And now I want to top stitch this one. So I'm going to top stitch. I want my stitch a little bit bigger. I want it to be, I want it to show. And I'm going to top stitch down each side. And that just helps these, but I'm not going to trim these seam allowances back. They will bounce, even though I've clapped them, done them with a clapper, clapped them. Um, mm. <laughs> so I'm going to, when you're doing top stitching, you really need to think about having a guide to follow so you know what you're doing each time you do your top stitching. So I'm going to use the inside edge of the foot as my guide and I'm going to move the needle all the way over to the right. I think that would work. I want to go a bit further. I want to go a bit further over actually. I want to do it about there. Excuse me while I just turn my machine on and off again for that good old way of resetting the machine. Mm. Right there. Yeah, I was trying to get my needle to move over, but it's decided not to move. Is okay. the foot's down? Oh. No. Uh oh. I'm just going to leave it where it is. It might move halfway through my stitching. That's your stitch length that you were adjusting, no, not your width. Ah, uh, that's what it was. See, I'm looking from the funny angle. That's better. <laughs> that's better. So I actually only want to. Be oh on six. no, not a rookie mistake in oh, Claire's thread. Gosh, it's because I'm looking from this funny angle at the side of my machine. There we go. That's better. So I move my needle over to five, position five. And I'm using the edge of the walking foot. Thank you, technical assistant. Um. There we go. And then when I stitch the other way, it will be the same distance from the centre seam. That's what I was trying to explain. These techniques always seem like a good idea, and then when you go to do it live, <laughs> something goes out of the window. There we go. So you can see that's top stitch, and I've done mine quite wide um, from the seam. You can see that with the pink thread. I was trying to make sure you could see it there. There we go. Now a third one I'm going to do. These. It's one that I really like to do on um, things like shell tops and things like that that I make um, use the right button this time to put it back to the middle so I can just sew my seam quickly. I'm just going to sew my seam. This time, I'm just going to finger press this open and I'm going to select my triple zigzag stitch, which is number eight here, which does three stitches up and three stitches back down. So I'm going to select that one. Now I might want to make my stitch width a bit longer for this. So, so said, was that right sides together? That was. This is right sides together, this one, yeah. So the seam allowances are going to be on the inside. And I'm using my triple zigzag stitch. So I'm, there's in the, in the uh, walking foot, there's a little, um, little mark in the centre of the walking foot, and I'm using that as my guide. That's going down the centre of the seam. So I'm going to be zigzagging either side of the seam. Trying to keep it as straight as I can from this rather strange angle that I'm sewing up. Oh, the way 
down. This look, I always think this looks like quite, quite sort of a nice sportswear um, finish. So on the right side, you have your zigzag over your seam, like that. And obviously you can use matching thread. On the wrong side, you've got your um, stitching here. And then you can take something like your applique scissors and trim off the excess seam allowance either side. So you haven't got little bits that might get tucked under. So these applique scissors are really useful. I always thought I'd never find, I'd never use these in sewing, so I thought they're just they're just for applique. But actually, there's lots of little things I keep finding that you can use them for in dressmaking. And then just trim off the excess so that it looks really nice and neat on the inside as well. So the board wall's not going to fray, so you haven't got to worry about overlocking or anything like that. It's just to give some sort of decoration and to help the seams to lie flat when you're working with them. So that's that's three quite nice seam finishes. There we go. So you, I need to trim mine. My, my, my big Izzy, I did my top stitching really close to the centre seam. You did, didn't you? So if I just show you on Amy's... But I haven't trimmed it yet. Let's see if you can see that. Amy did the, this, the top stitching on her big easy top. You can see that because it's all on the same match, matching. So Amy's done her top stitching quite close to her seam. So on the inside, she can now go in and trim off all the excess mm. seam allowance on the inside. Janet's saying, can we put pictures of the different seams on the Facebook page? Yes, of course. Yes. We'll take a, we'll take a picture of this and put it up on the Facebook page because that's... Um, those are my three favourite ones to do. The seams on the outside, top stitch down each side, and like you like you saw with Amy's, you can do this at any distance um, from the seam, so that's up to you. And you could use you could use coloured thread like I've done there. <laughs> you could use matching thread, uh, or you could do the triple zigzag over the seam there, and then on the inside they look nice and neat as well. There's a um, most uh, raw edge uh, garments are, for the hems, they're just cut straight. I, did, I have tried um, turning up a hem on a raw edge jacket, but it just doesn't look right. It, 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 does, it's, it um, makes it too stiff. But on the uh, Berlin jacket that uh, Amy made in the rust colours behind me, they did a really nice technique for a, a, a hem finish that works with the board wool and doesn't give any extra weight. Well, it's on the facing. It's hem of the sleeve. Yeah, on the facing. So it's a, a, a way of edging but giving a bit of weight. Oops, so sorry. I'm just going to swing round. Oh yeah, can you see that there? That's the Berlin jacket. Yeah, so that's the outside of the jacket and it's got a raw edge. But on the inside, they just added... So instead of putting the facing right sides together, they put it wrong sides together and then just stitched it so you've got a double edge here but it gives a really nice edge to your jacket they've also done the same thing on the pockets there and on the hem of the cuff so instead of turning the hem up you add a strip of fabric so i'm just going to show you that just for um to reinforce that so what you would do you'd have your um part of your garment that you would normally do a hem and you cut a strip of fabric and i think i've cut this maybe two inches, let me just measure it, sorry. I have, I've just done it, two and a quarter inches, but a couple of inches is all you need for a hem. And when you're cutting strips like this, if you've got a rotary cutter, it makes it so much easier. You can get really nice, you can see that, I cut that piece with a rotary cutter. So you can get really nice square edges, which you don't quite get with the scissors. Um, so I always, I often cut out rough, uh, cut out with my scissors on board one and then go over it with the rotary cutter just to square all the edges off. Uh, Cynthia's just asking, do you know whether Bloomsbury has a nice cream boiled wool that would work for the Big Easy? I know that she has a cream yeah. boiled wool viscose, Cynthia. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think the boiled wool in cream sometimes is hit and miss, but there definitely is a cream boiled wool viscose. I expect if Victoria's listening, she'll be able to Yeah, she'll be able to that. confirm that. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be I think I spied it the other day. She'll be answering on... Um, yeah, that's on Instagram. So. Facebook. Uh, did I leave my pins all the way over there? They're there. Oh, there they are. Yes. Sorry. Excuse me. So what you would do is cut yourself a strip of fabric um, about, about two inches deep and you place it wrong sides together. So you place the strip of fabric on the wrong side of your fabric. 
Uh, Claire's asking what the sizing is like on the Berlin jacket as she's got the pattern and some board wool. I found that it was the finished garment measurements were really accurate, Claire. So when you're looking at the pattern sizing, I made it because I had no idea either and I hadn't worked with Tasuti, but their finished garment measurements were really accurate. And it's quite nice and oversized anyway, so mm. um, yeah, I found it I good. Found... I, the only thing I would say is move the pockets up slightly higher from the placement that they suggest because they're a little bit low. Yeah, I find Tasuti Tasuti um, are really good. They're I've made really good, I've made some it? trousers with their patterns and little tops and things, and their yeah their sizing is really good. So I'm just going to pin this on to the wrong side of the garment, and then I'm going to edge stitch each side. So. I'm going to go back to my straight stitch and again when you're edge stitching it's all about finding yourself a guide so you can do a nice line of straight stitching so I'm going to use the inside edge of the foot so the inside edge of the foot there is lined up to the edge of the piece of fabric I'm using for my facing and I'm just going to stitch along there So it's a nice alternative where you want to add a bit of weight to your garment but you don't want to turn up a hem. And then I'm going to go back and join the two pieces together on the bottom. So this is what they did on the top of the pocket for instance. So just this could be a pocket, so that's the inside of the pocket and that's the outside but it's just got a little bit more stability on it. There we go, Victoria is saying that 2341 for wool viscose in cream. Oh, that's it wasn't right. the right quality, yes. yeah it was, a, it was a funny texture and a few yeah. marks on it so tricky but the wool viscose would be better for the big, big easy, easy top, top anyway yeah. uh, Cynthia. So there you go, 2341 search on Bloomsbury Square. So there you go, So you could, that's a really nice way to um, add a bit of body to the top of a pocket piece or the bottom of a hem on a board wool jacket. I find on the Berlin jacket the facing doesn't fly open, it really yeah, sits it's in got front because it's like it. got a bit of weight, yeah, mm. so it's nice. I think also on the Berlin they did a lap seam, which I haven't shown you here but I could just quickly show you. They did a lap seam, didn't they? Mm -hmm. So they did, um, instead of doing right sides together they put the fabric on top of each other and then stitch down the middle yeah like that which is another quite a nice option um it was a bit tricky uh, yeah it's quite tricky but obviously i'm just doing it roughly here but they give you actual measurements because you want to make sure that you overlap by the right amount to keep your seam allowance so whenever you're doing this make sure you're overlapping so you would just stitch down the middle like that so there we go that's all my board wool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Victoria says she loves your board wool, your Berlin jacket. Aww. That was Thanks, that, that was fabric. That from was Bloomsbury. fabric from Bloomsbury Square, yeah. Of course. The rust. Rust boiled wool. Okay. My coat tops are too on the floor. So we're gonna move back. Um, I just need to avoid all the yeah, obstacles. Uh, oh Karen says Karen said that she's made the, the anchor coat. Is that a style art pattern? I'm Aaron? sorry, I've just shown everyone the messy room. Yeah, don't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> God. Okay. Sorry, I've just got to get around this massive light. One second. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're seeing all the secrets. Oh behind. no, oh no. Secrets behind the camera. <laughs> right, next week. Maybe I need a tripod on wheels. Yeah. Next, Maybe you should next bit of kit. Slide the camera across. The... <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, everyone. That, uh... Yeah, so that's the, I'm just going to put that one back on there so you can see that. That's the Maker's Atelier one. And uh, that's the Berlin jacket. <laughs> I'm glad that was helpful anyway, Karen. I think that was helpful. It's a, it's a great fabric to work with and you can get quite addicted for making lots of things in it because it's so easy. So it's nice to add a bit of detail with um, different seam finishes and uh, hem details like that. So. 
Yeah, this is lovely, this Berlin. You can just about see the lap, the lap seams there on the sleeve. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. <laughs> it was quite nice and tidy <laughs> this morning when we started the sew along. And uh, yeah, it's all got a bit crazy in here. Oh, sew me something, that's right. Yes, the, uh, the anchor coat. That's a great board wall one. Hasn't that got a sort of drape front on it as well? So that's lovely, this Aurora Edge jacket. Yes, there are there are a few there are a few uh, nice jackets you can make board wool. The Meg's Atelier one comes in two different styles: the one with the set-in sleeve and the one with the um, drop shoulder. So, and I made the swing jacket from board wool as well. So, so Amy's going to come in now. So she's going. Amy's been very busy this week, obviously helping with the sew alongs, and but she's actually made herself something new this week. I have. A bit more fancy than my big easy tops and things. Just apologies to everyone on Instagram. I won't be able to see your comments now. Unfortunately, yes. because the phone's still on right now. <laughs> oh yes, we can only see the comments on uh, Facebook. So we'll catch yes. up with those later. Anything we miss, we will catch up. I'm just going to move her out of the way. <laughs> we think we've got it all organised, and then what happens? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We are, are organised. Really? I think we are. Yeah, I haven't moved the chairs. Okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you've had a busy week. Lovely, lovely hair today as well. Oh yeah, I went curly today. Curly hair today. Did you scroll? Oh, I think there's some. Oh, hold on. Oh no, that's no, not. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. I had a busy week. Yes. Don't remember what I was doing. Sewing. I was yeah, sewing. <laughs> sewing all week. You did have a day making masks. I had a day making masks. Um, oh, what's Susan made? It's finished a long, narrow pincushion from the seam off cuts of lint and tweed. Oh, that sounds nice. That would be a lovely pincushion, yeah, Susan. Yeah, what a good idea. You can't let any go to waste. Susan, I did finish my blouse. This is it. So this is my new blouse I made this week. I actually did sewing for myself. You, <laughs> you were finishing it off in the Big Easy, the big easy Top. I was top finishing it off again. yesterday, yeah. yeah. Um, so I needed to do buttons. So it's got these sort of balloon sleeves and a button cuff. And it wraps over, um, and the pattern is. Ooh, I've got a head on there. The pattern is the Wally's blouse by Fiber Mood. Um, so it's my first time trying a Fiber Mood pattern. And what did we think of it? Well, the actual <laughs> yes. the pattern cutting, great. I mean, I love it, and it fits, and it's really lovely. And I would definitely make it again. But the instructions are questionable, and I think maybe they've been translated from another language. Mm. So they. Um, yeah, it's just, they assume a lot of knowledge. That's what we decided, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, they assume yeah. a lot of knowledge. So just little things to make it work properly, like under, uh, stay stitching a collar, uh, snipping into that stitching when you understitch, all those sort of things weren't quite right. There's a few other things. Oh, everyone's loving Thank it. Thank you. The fabric is a Ralph Lauren silk that I bought from Mood. It's a brushed silk that I've had in my stash since when we went to New York last January. Mm. I bought it then and I've been waiting for the perfect garment to make it in so and it was good it only takes two meters so it's mm. a nice stash busting I love the, I love the long cuffs I the long cuffs really are so lovely. nice and it's really nice to wear as well it's nice so that's what I was doing yesterday was putting on my buttons and uh, one buttonhole went wrong as is okay. standard okay. so I had to unpick it <laughs> oh, thank you Barbara it. it's a lovely color I couldn't decide what it was I thought it was gray but actually it's, it's green. green yeah, yeah. Exactly. and uh, the buttons are from well, our stock of textile garden buttons. Yes. So, yeah. No, I'm very happy that I actually made something for myself. Yeah, it's <laughs> so sweet. good. I feel yeah. quite jealous because I was making lots of sort of samples for Big Easy Tops and sweatshirts and things. Oh, and then you made a lovely silk I made blouse. a silk blouse, yeah. yeah. It's, really, it's all French seams, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, yeah I French seamed the inside because that's another thing they suggest, just overlock it, but mm. obviously... With silk, I didn't want to do that. So. No. And it's got a really long tie. The tie's about, the tie it, about is, three metres in the it's, it? Each tie is a metre and a half. Mm. So, yeah, it's three metres in total. So it's quite a lot of turning and <laughs> pressing. And, but, yeah. yeah, really worth it because then you can cinch in the waist. Well, Jen's um, saying that the sleeve looks very 30. Very 30s. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got these lovely pleats that go in opposite directions on the cuff. So... But I would definitely, mm. I've got another fibre mood pattern I want to use. I think you can get over the dodgy instructions if uh, the pattern cutting is worth it at the end. So yes. when I tried it on, I was really nervous, wasn't I? Yeah. No, these instructions, I've lost all my confidence with this yeah. company. But oh, it was worth it. it. I think these, these big statement sleeves are really fashionable this year, aren't they? I think mm. I've got some... a couple of patterns mm. coming up. 
that have sleeves like this. Haven't you got one that's got shearing? Yeah, that's the one I'm making can, next week. Yeah. It's um, Stylark, I think it's the Ava dress mm. or something like that. Anyway, I, I'm making that next week and that's going to be a big cuff like this, all sheared. Yeah, so. that'll be lovely. Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> well, probably, hopefully we'll both have something a bit new next, next week. Is the yeah, plan. that's the plan. Although we have no got... more jumpers. No. I've, no got enough, I've got enough. I've got enough. I've got enough cozy clothes to wear now. That's fine. I was a bit short of those, so now we can make some lovely things. Because before, <laughs> that's what we had to go and get, wasn't it? From Bloomsbury Square, we decided we've got all this lovely fabric at home, but we didn't have anything to make ourselves a sweatshirt. No, we didn't have anything. So we so. had to. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had to do that. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's what we've been up to this week: is making lots of nice things and lots of plans. Plans yeah. for sew-alongs. Plans for. Filming. Yeah, Filming. at least we've got the gear now. So I mean, if you saw this room, we've got massive big floodlights mm -hmm. staring at us now. And yes. Yeah, tripods everywhere, but we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We've got to try and work out what the sound out, haven't we, on the solar lungs? Yeah. So, so I'm just going to slide my drinks trolley in. On Instagram, you might not be able to see the trolley, but on Facebook, you probably can. It's normally the stand we use normally have the sea mines on. Yes, yeah. it's that's my that's cocktail trolley on Friday. <laughs> so. <laughs> the cocktail this Today, day well as I mentioned last week I am doing dry January so I have to kind of think of cocktails that I can adapt to be a mocktail but could be a cocktail so I was doing some research and for we've still using my um, our clean liquor clean gin so non-alcoholic gin and I found this great website uh, actually it was a cocktail from Seedlip who mm. are most of you have probably heard of Seedlip yeah. the non-alcoholic spirit company they have a cocktail called a Pitini. And we just like saying it, so we're going to make it. <laughs> it's really fun to say. So, <laughs> so we're going to make a Pitini today because it is one of your five a day. Uh, it's a healthy cocktail. You could obviously have gin <laughs> instead of the non-alcoholic gin. Uh, so ingredients, it's quite a story to go with this cocktail. <laughs> because of course. In, in advance, you have to make yourself what is called a shrub with peat. So... <laughs> The night before, you just have to get. Yes. Uh, oh, they're in the fridge. Shall I go and get them? No, we don't need them. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's only for garnish. So the night before, you have to do equal parts. So a cup. Well, you can make it alcoholic, Charlie. That's the. Yeah, thing. you could put some other gin. Some you just alcoholic gin. Actual gin. <laughs> equal parts. So I did a cup of each. So one cup of fresh peas, or frozen defrosted peas, a cup of sugar, white sugar, and a cup of apple cider vinegar. You have to mash the peas first. That was a mistake I made because peas float, which is, then makes it impossible to mash <laughs> if you add them all together. And then anyway, mash the peas first. Uh, leave it in the fridge overnight and then strain it and you get this sort of lime green liquid. And that is your pea shrub. Um, Amazing. We've never, what you learn. Who knew? Yeah, who knew you could make a pea shrub? Yeah. So to your shaker or container that you could turn into a shaker, add some ice. Then you want one shot or 25 mils of your pre-prepared pea shrub, which is basically you're making a, a syrup, a flavoured sugar syrup. Um, of course, full of antioxidants with the apple cider vinegar. It's very, so very good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do cocktails every week, Karen. Yeah, we every do. week there's a cocktail. Yep. Amy used to, Amy um, used to work in hospitality. She used to run bars. And uh, restaurants. Yeah. Uh, so Amy has lots of experience. There's many more to come as well. It's been a yes. challenge on the mocktails, I have to say. But yes. as soon as February is here, <laughs> we're going to get exciting again. So uh, then it's a double shot of gin. So 50 mils of gin, or in our case, clean gin. Mm -hmm. I don't know where my big shot measure's gone. Oh, is it not in the office? It's not in the office. Oh. That is where we keep yes. all of our cocktail <laughs> where, equipment in the office. Where else would you find your cocktail Where else would you find it? In the sewing room's office. Um, and then a teaspoon of agave or maple syrup. Just a teaspoon. A teaspoon each, is that? A teaspoon each. So we're going to put two in for us. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara likes the cocktails. <laughs> well, I just like the fact that it's got vegetables in it. Yes. A cocktail with veg. Oh, very sorry. Nice. So, give it a shake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a good, we have a good, good, good office. So Margaret was saying, can you repeat the, um, the, the pea, pea shrub? Yeah, for the pea shrub, it's equal parts. So one cup of 
mushed peas, <laughs> one cup of apple cider vinegar, and one cup of sugar, white sugar. <laughs> and here we go, and you get this nice little, it's very slightly pretty. peely shade. I think I was wanting it to be a bit greener, but anyway, it looks like the picture, so that's all we want. Mm -hmm. And then you get this nice white foam, and it says um, it does count as one of your five a day, Charlie. I've decided that yes, it does. We have <laughs> yeah. um, Even if you use real gin. Yeah. <laughs> well, then that would be two, but next it'd be junipers. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, it then says to garnish a single solitary pea, but I left them in the fridge. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone without the pea today. Wasn't listening what's after the shrub. So you do 25 mils of the shrub, one shot, two shots of gin, and a teaspoon of maple syrup or agave syrup or honey, some sort of sweet syrup. <laughs> and it's really nice, cheers. Yeah. We have tried this before, cheers. so we know it's nice. Yeah. It's so nice. It's really refreshing, actually. Yeah, it's a really nice drink, I have to say. Mm, we were saying yesterday, it would be nice if you added a bit of mint or something. Mm, it would be really yeah. nice, maybe as a, a long one, you could make it and then add it with some soda water in the summer with lots of ice and mint leaves. Mm. So, yeah, this is a good one. A peatini. A peatini, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some mocktails. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Happy Friday. Mm. So I hope you're going to try this one. Because everyone's got peas in their freezer. Well, exactly. Yes. And I did try it with fresh peas and frozen peas. One, one teaspoon, so. One teaspoon. Mm. I did two because there's two of us. Mm. One teaspoon of agave. 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 There's no alcohol in that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Couldn't bring the daffies by mistake, no. <laughs> So, so did Sue, did you make this? So we told Sue about this yesterday and she was going to make the pea shrub last night. How did your pea shrub go? Did you get a nice looking pea did shrub? Did you get a nice colour? Mm. The first time I did it, it wasn't great. I had to do it again because I didn't match the peas enough. No. So. Tricky one. Post. Oh, that was uh, Catherine asking if she ordered some fabric today, but it arrived by Wednesday. Oh, okay. Yeah, Victoria's saying a bit tricky. Mm. Post is a bit unreliable, but if you select priority post, yeah. She can do it track 24. I think some people for the big easy top had ordered just a couple of days before and it arrived the next day. I think Madeline's. Mm. Barbara <laughs> says roll on February to try with gin and yes. Sue says her house smells like a fish and chip shop. <laughs> That's so true. Mushy mm. peas and vinegar. Mm. It doesn't taste like that. It doesn't taste. <laughs> it doesn't taste like mushy peas. It just tastes really nice. I can't even think what it tastes. just really nice. Jan says, now she knows why we do this on a Friday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hi, Jan. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we do it on a Friday. Yeah, we used to do it, obviously, last lockdown, we were doing it on Saturday afternoons from home, but actually, it was a bit dangerous because we were, yeah, we never got we were a bit half cut afternoons. by the end of it at yeah. one o'clock. I thought I might use peas with my fish instead of <laughs> mushy peas. <laughs> uh, so, Claire, same retreat, same. Okay. So, oh no, we yeah. were such a hard. No. <laughs> we need to make an announcement. Yeah. Which, um, yeah. Add, is that a decision? Really, it's a decision. It? Yes, it's a decision. We're going to, we decided that we're going to postpone this year's sewing retreats. I can't believe that this is where we were last year, just before the March sewing retreat, saying we're going to have to postpone to the following year. But we really don't think that it's going to be uh, safe enough for everyone to go to Brighton in, in March. In March. Or April. Or April. So that's our two retreats, which are our, our Brighton Sewing Retreat and the Makers Atelier Sewing Retreat, which is in April. We're going to postpone both of them. So sadly, we will be in touch this week. We're going to... We've confirmed move... the Makers Atelier Retreat yes. to the first week of September. Week of September. And March 1, we're just confirming the date with the mm. hotel. It'll either be in late August or sometime in September or maybe early October but we're yeah. just confirming which week the hotel can do. Exactly and we will put a date in for next March as well. We just don't so, think it's safe yeah. um, even if lockdown was over. Um, it's not safe to take 18 people in no. a room and we can't enjoy the dinners together exactly. and all of that so. We like to have loads of fun and there, there would be so many restrictions we'd be so worried about everything. We'd so. have to have screens up everywhere. Yeah. And, so I'm so sorry everybody, uh, but we will be, so hopefully you will all be able to come with us when we set out the new dates. Um, we will put dates in for next March as well, so that means we'll have three retreats in the autumn, so there'll be the West Country retreat as well, and then there'll be the, um, uh, there'll be the one next March in Brighton as well. So, uh, so we'll still have lots of fun, 
But um, yeah, Claire's saying it'd be good to do it once we've been vaccinated. It will be. Exactly. Yes, and, it will. Yeah, everyone's saying it's the right decision. Good. Thank you so much. It's always you. really difficult. We hate cancelling things, but especially uh, the April one. We sort of assumed that the March one would have to be, especially mm -hmm. if lockdown gets extended. But we sort of we spoke to Francis at the Makers Atelier yeah. as well. And thought that um, yeah, it'd be a good idea to move that one as well because mm -hmm. Brighton hasn't been it's been hit quite badly as well in yeah. Brighton. So. Mm. We will all go, Victoria said, we'll all go wild after our vaccinations. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I know, Victoria will be able to come and join us here. Come, yeah. come here on a Friday. Come and have a teeny with us. Yeah. No, we're having Cosmopolitan with Victoria. Oh yeah. But I'll be sure. So, yes, yeah, so we don't want to finish on some, some sad, sad news, but it is something to look forward to as well, isn't it? To, to and we're going to try and get the dates for next year as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, then you definitely... We'll definitely be doing that one. Yes. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sasha. Um, oh, yes. When's your, when was your wedding, Sasha? That's coming it's up, isn't it? Rebooked for April. Oh, from last September. Oh. It's a difficult decision with April, isn't it? Because you sort of hope that we'll be able to be out and about a bit more. But it's it's really whether we can be out and about in bigger groups, isn't mm. it? Because that's what we like to think about. We're kind of um, comparing it to last year, mm. thinking, okay, well, in August. It was a bit better and they were allowed larger groups and mm. we probably could have done one last August. So um, We still couldn't have had big groups in restaurants though, could we? No. We had to split up. Yeah. So. so we'll see. But at the moment, yeah. August, September, makes us tell you definitely first week of September. Mm. And the March one, we're just waiting on the date. Yeah. So we'll be in touch very soon and we'll have lots of fun things planned. Like yeah. we always do at sewing retreats. Victoria says she needs a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I need a cocktail. I'm so glad I'm over the halfway point of this month now. <laughs> or just today. Mm. Halfway point. Just, but do try a, a, a P-teeny. Um, oh, Jen says Dominic's godfather moved his wedding from September to May and now again to September. September, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. difficult. It's very difficult to make any plans at the moment. But it does it? mean, Sue said earlier, it means more sew-alongs yeah, and more, more lives. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jessie, October, you just about got in, wasn't, didn't you, really? 23rd of April. Oh, Sasha. Yeah, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Well, fingers crossed for you. So, uh, Sue says she's going to start saving her pennies for the next retreat. Yes. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Next March will be walkers. <laughs> we'll be celebrating. <laughs> Party oh, in the streets. We can have the gin people back and everything. <laughs> I'll go this time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do a cocktail masterclass. <laughs> Oh, Sasha, I hope your wedding goes ahead. It'll be lovely whenever you have it, won't it? It'll be so lovely whenever you have it. Jen says she might be able to afford to cruise if it's next year. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. Well, We're still fingers crossed that it's going to go ahead. Yeah, our cruise, is, our cruise is, uh, has been rebooked for August. Uh, so fingers crossed we'll be able to do that this year. And obviously... Our plan always was for if it's you know if it all works well we're going to make it an annual thing because we think it'll be a fun thing to do. So, any more sewing? Sue says, "Yeah, we're on a cocktail." Yeah, session. we're on a cocktail session. Definitely. I'll quiz you all. Anyone yes. that's coming on the retreat, I'll quiz you. Like, yeah. All right then, what did you lot learn this yeah. year? <laughs> I taught you already. Do a quiz co <laughs> cocktail night yeah. quiz night. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So there we go. More sewing to look forward to. And more cocktails. And more cocktails. So yes. Awesome. Oh, oh March got, the first. Okay, we'll oh, avoid let's that know date. When, then. Suzanne, we'll yeah. avoid it. March the first. Got to avoid that date. Yeah. Yeah. Jen's saving for the cruise next year. <laughs> so there we go. So we'll be here, whatever, whether we're uh, locked down or not, we'll be around. Yeah. We'll be here to bring you more sewing news and lots of uh, tech, uh, tips and techniques, sew alongs, online workshops. Let us know your ideas. We'll carry on doing them. Cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a cocktail. There's always a cocktail, yeah. There's always, <laughs> always a demo. A so, what, I don't know how long we've been going on for. Oh, 26th of March, okay. 26th we'll March. avoid that, Suzanne. We will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Catherine's got to go, yeah. Oh, thanks for joining us. And let us, yeah, let us know if you'd like to join us on Wednesday for the wide leg trousers. That'd be lovely. They're a nice, comfy pair of trousers to wear. So, yes, that's all I have for everyone this week. Yeah, we ran over today. We did. You're going to have to run round. I am. Run around without tripping over any cables. Obstacle central. Bye everyone, lovely <laughs> to see you all again. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. We've had a really lovely week seeing everybody. It's been lovely to see everyone today. Uh, and uh, just keep in touch, have a great week. And keep sewing. What's that? Jennifer's just saying, who's doing that to avoid the 29th of March too? <laughs> yeah, well, don't you worry. <laughs> see you all next week or on a sew along. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend.